Welcome back to the Grace Life Church uh, Church Podcast. My name is Brian Clark. I am your host, and I'm also the lead pastor at Grace Life Church. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching today. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you somehow just wandered across this, um, if you want to go ahead and subscribe to the channel, we bring you fresh content every Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock. And it's 10 to 12 minutes. It's short. You can do it like on your coffee break. Uh, or, or whatever else, and get some good power-packed uh, info and insight from the Word of God that will strengthen your faith and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus and live out His plan for your life. And then also, again, if you're new to the channel and you're maybe in the Greensboro High Point, Winston-Salem area, or even if you're not, you know, we have people that watch or, or, go, or go to our church, but they don't live in North Carolina. They live states away, but they watch us online. They're a part. And uh, so anyway, you can check out our website at gracelifetriad.com. If we can bless you anyway, or you have questions, or you need prayer, you can follow a contact us form. We'll follow up back up with you that way. Um, or that if you are looking for a church in the area, or again, if you're out of the area, right? I'm having to say this now because the world's a little differently than it used to be. You don't necessarily have to go to the church down the street. You can go to the church three states away or five states away. Check out our website, gracelifetriad.com, and we'll have some... Um, information for you there. Also got all of our videos that we've ever done, all our teachings that are on there for the last several years, uh, blogs, articles, a lot of good content that'll bless you. All right. So, all right. Well, enough of the housekeeping. Uh, now I want to get into what we're looking at today. And again, on this uh, topic of how words uh, or the power of words. And today I want to look at how words can actually paint a picture. The words we declare paint a picture. And we've been looking at this passage over in Matthew 12. So I want to start there, and then we're going to go a couple other places in the Scripture real quickly this morning. And in verse 34, this is Jesus talking. He said, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you are justified. And again, the word justified means you're innocent. And then that also includes all the benefits that come from innocence, right? The blessings of God, the favor of God, healing, provision, you name it. Um, and then by your words, you shall be condemned, all right? And so if it's by our words that we're justified or by our words that we are condemned, we want to say the right words. Now, this verses, these verses that I've uh, been teaching or reading through here this morning have created questions for people over the years. Because in verse 34, Jesus said, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what people have, I've heard people say this before, that, man, I've just got to get my heart changed. I, my heart, you'll hear this often. You'll hear people, I know the word in my head, but I don't have it in my heart. And that's why they say negative stuff. Or that's why they do wrong things. They've got an intellectual knowledge of God's truth, but they don't really have it deep in a, in a heart level uh, where it's in the core of their being. And so then they'll read uh, like what Jesus said here, and they'll feel sort of condemned by it. And, and they'll feel like, man, if I just had a good heart, at, then I would speak good words. I would speak words of life and power, but I've got a bad heart. And, and I, I just... What do I do? I mean, Pastor Brian, should I just keep my mouth shut? Should I just not say anything because um, I, my, I don't have a good heart? I don't have the good treasure of my heart. I, bad comes out when I talk. And and so I've heard people say that over the years. And so here, here's I want to help I answer that. I want to show you how to actually change your heart. The first thing I would say to you is, yes, if you've got a lot of negativity in your heart, a lot of bad in your heart, a lot of evil, keep your mouth shut. Right? Don't say anything, all right? Uh, but that's half the that's half the issue. The other thing that we need to do is we need to learn how to actually change a heart because it doesn't do me any good to have a bad heart, even as a born again Christian with all His Spirit on the inside of me. If I've got this this internal conflict deep in the recesses of my heart, where I've got a lot of negativity, I've got a lot of evil, I've got a lot of, a lot of stuff that is contrary to the kingdom of God. And again, I'm using the word e evil in a broad context. I'm not just saying sin evil. I'm saying evil in the sense of depression, of defeat, of things maybe you don't necessarily 
uh, classify as evil in the sense of, of sin, but it's different than what God sees for your life. God doesn't see you as defeated. God doesn't see you as sick. He doesn't see you walking in lack. He doesn't see you not having favor with people. He sees the opposite. So to think otherwise is, is evil, is at least the way I'm communicating it today. So how do I change the image in my heart? How do I actually deal with this? Well, one of the keys, and this goes back into what we were saying yesterday, is through the words that we say. Yesterday, I talked about how Abraham, you, you've got to say it before you can see it. A lot of people want to see it before they can say it. You say truth whether you feel like it is true or not. As soon as you know the truth of God's word, then you declare it whether you feel like it is true or not, and then eventually you'll see it on the inside of you. I want to, give, I want to go further with that today. So look over with me in um, Psalms chapter 45. I'm using more scripture on this podcast. Sometimes we just do like kind of topical stuff or current event type stuff on this, but today I'm really trying to break into some deeper things. Uh, and so we're going to look at a, multiple passages here, but look with me in Psalm chapter 45, verse 1. And it says, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the, tongue, the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I'm going to read that last part again. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. What does a pen do? It writes things down, right? I mean, I'm going to have a meeting later today. I'll have a pen and I'll have a notebook. I'm going to write stuff down that I want to, that I want to notate and that I want to remember. And so your tongue has the capacity to write things. And it actually has the capacity to write things on your heart. Let me show you this. Now let's go over to Proverbs chapter 7. I'm going to go to verse 3, but I'll start in verse 1 so you can see this is all about the Word of God. Proverbs 7 verse 1, Solomon says, My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live, and my law is the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. How do I write God's word on the tablet of my heart? It's with what I say. My tongue is the pen of the ready writer. And so this is the key that unlocks the truth of Matthew 12. 12 verses 34 to 37 that we were looking at today. How do I have, uh, declare out of the abundance of my heart, right? Out of the abundance of my heart, the mouth speaks. How do I have a good abundance in my heart? I begin to declare God's truth about me and I begin to declare things and confess the word of God over me when I don't feel like it is true. When I feel like I am a sinner, when I feel like I am defeated, when I feel like nobody likes me, when I feel like Nothing works. All the bad stuff. When I feel like that is true, that's when you get into the Word of God, into the mirror if you have to, and you just begin to say, that's not true. I am the righteousness of God. I am favored by God. I have favor with God, favor with man, and a good understanding. I have the mind of Christ. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. I am seated with heavenly places. He can, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and on and on and on and I can go. But you begin to declare what God is saying over you. And as you begin to do that, again, I'll get later in the week, I'm going to talk about how the words we say actually release to bring forth change that we want to see. But a big part of that is you got to change the internal world before you can change the external world. Because if you have a negative inside, it's going to be hard to operate in faith because there's no faith in that, right? And so when we change what we say, uh, see on the inside, then we'll actually have the faith to see change in our exterior world. Again, words create worlds. So the words that we speak over ourselves create a world that we see. Again, you've probably seen this with uh, little kids. You see kids that grow up in a positive home, in an affirming home where their mom and dad are telling them they love them, how they can do anything, how and just speak positive words. And that kid has a high self-esteem and they have this, this expectation they can do anything, right? And, and then you have other kids that they grow up in a home where they're neglected, where their parents beat them down with their words, maybe beat them with their hands. And, and it creates a negative world on the uh, inside of them. And then they get into school and they don't do well or whatever else. 
and, and they get in a lot of trouble. And, and what, what happened? They had a wrong image on the inside. And so whenever you have a wrong image on the inside, begin to say God's word, whether you feel like it is true or not. And as you change what you say, you'll change what you see, and you'll actually change the picture on your heart. And so I hope today has really encouraged you. And if you have questions, you can definitely send them in through Facebook or Instagram or the platform you're watching on. And let me pray for you, and, uh, and then we'll be done for the day. So, Father, I just thank you for everyone that is watching this. God, I pray that, Holy Spirit, you just give people that are going through this stuff right now, help them get a, a picture of you, God, and, and just verses uh, from your word, God, that would uh, define the reality that you see. And then help them, Holy Spirit, uh, to have boldness to begin to say what they, your word says, whether they feel like it is true and change the image on the inside. And as they change the image on the outside, the reality on the outside is going to change. And so, Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Well, I hope today encouraged you. Um, again, if you're new, you can subscribe to our channel. We'd encourage you to do that. We bring you fresh content every Monday through Friday uh, at 10 o'clock, 10 to 12 minutes. We keep it tight. Uh, so just something that's really tight and impactful uh, to help you throughout the week. And so God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you soon.